Hi there and welcome to another HTMX video. In this video we're going to demonstrate the click to load pattern in HTMX and this allows you to dynamically load up more data onto your page using HTMX. And in the next video we're going to look at the click to edit pattern. This is another pattern that allows you to actually edit the objects on the page in line and it uses HTMX to do that without having to send forms and refresh the page. So for this video, we'll focus on click to load. So let's load up this here. And the demo that HTMX have got on their documentation um, shows you this table here. And when you click this button, it says load more agents that will dynamically fetch and load those into the DOM. So we're gonna show how to do that using Django and using HTMX on the front end. So let's get started and we'll dive into the code. Now the code is available on GitHub. There will be a link to the description and it's the Django HTMX student list repository. So check that out and you can get started with this tutorial. And in that repository, we've got some sample code. We have a basic view here, an index view that loads up a template and that template just contains the word hi. And this is the basis for the tutorial that we're gonna build. So we're gonna extend that now. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna define a model that we can work with throughout this video. So let's go to models.py and in here we're going to define a student model and it's going to have three fields. One for the name which will be a car field, max length of 80 let's say. We'll copy that and we'll define another field and call this subject. And finally we'll use another field, date of birth, which will be a models.date field. And the final thing in this model is we'll define a dunder string method to stringify the model and return the name of the student. So the student will have a name, it will have a subject, and they will also have a date of birth. Once that's done, we can stop the server and we can run make migrations. And that will make the migrations if they don't already exist. And finally, we can run the migrate command and that will generate the database tables for our application. And I've noticed here that the migration for this student model hasn't been created and that's because I've not saved the file. So let's do that again and run make migrations. And now we've created the model student and we can now migrate to create that table within the database. So what we're going to do now is register this model in our Django admin. So let's import this model into the admin.py file and we'll then call the admin.site.register function and we'll pass the student model into that. And once you've done that, you can save the admin.py file and then we're gonna run the python manage.py create super user command so we can actually access the admin panel. And I'm gonna call the user Morty and we'll fill out a password and you can then create a super user. And what that means is when we run the Django server, we can access the admin panel and the URL to do that, if we go back to the page here, it says hi is slash admin and that will give us a login form for our administration panel. So let's log in as Morty. And you can see that in the core application, we have a student model. We've registered that successfully in the admin. And you can now go ahead and add these students. Now I'm gonna add five students to this application. Um, you can go ahead and add as many as you like. And we'll come back to the video once I've added those students. So we now have five students in our database. We've added them in the admin panel. So what we're now gonna do is we're gonna set up a page that lists out these students, similar to what is here in the HTMX documentation for the click to load pattern. We're gonna generate a table of data for these students. So let's now start creating that page. If we go to urls.py, we're gonna create another URL in here. I'm just gonna paste that in and it's gonna load up a view called student list. So we now need to go to our views.py file and define this view. It's gonna be called student list and it will take the request as an argument. Now what we want to do is we want to retrieve a list of all of the students so we can display them on the page. So we're going to display all of the students at first and then we're going to build in the click to load pattern. So in order to fetch the students, we need to load the model, the student model here. And then we can set a variable called students that's going to be equal to student.objects.all. So we'll fetch all of the students here on line 10. And we're then going to add those students to the context with a key of students. And then we'll finally render the template and that template is going to be the core slash index.html template and we'll pass the context to that render call. Now the index.html template you can see here this is the the template that contains high so we're going to change that now and in the content block we're going to add an html table here. So we've got a table and we're giving it the class of table that's a bootstrap 4 class and then within the table head we're defining uh, four columns. I'm actually going to remove this top one here. We have a name 
a subject and a date of birth and these correspond to the actual fields on our model or student model and we have an empty table body and that's where we're going to include a partial that we're going to create right now so let's paste that in there we're including a partial called list.html so save this file and then within the templates core we are going to create another file and it's going to be a partials slash list.html and that will create a list.html file within a partials directory and in this partial we're going to loop over the students and display the data within a table now we have access to the students via this key in our context which is equal to all of the students in the database at the moment so within our list.html partial, we're going to loop over that with a template for loop. It's going to be for student and students, and we can end the for loop here. So what we're going to do for each student is we're going to define a new table row, and within that there will be table data for each field on the model. So firstly, we're going to access the student's name, and then I'm going to copy this line three times, and we're going to change what's being rendered here. It's going to be the subject, and finally, the student's date of birth. And these are all going to be on separate columns within the table. So if we save that and load up the student list page, and the URL for that is slash students. So come out of the admin, and we'll pass students there. We see now we have a table with our five students um, and three columns. One for the name of the student, one for the subject that they're studying, and one for their date of birth. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a button on the final row of this table and it's going to mimic the setup here on the click to load example where we have a button at the end and when you click that button it will load up more students. So we're just going to paste the code for that button into the list.html partial. So we'll paste that in here and this should actually be outside of our for loop. We shouldn't be doing this every iteration. So after the for loop we will paste in this code and it basically encloses a button within a table row and we use the column span of let's change that to three and that will span the whole column span of the table and we center the button with the bootstraps text center class so let's see how that looks on the page go back to our page here and we now have this button at the bottom now at the moment this button doesn't do anything but what we're going to do is we're going to paginate our students. We have five of them. We're going to paginate them two at a time so we can demonstrate how to use this button. So what we need to do is we're paginating a function-based view in Django. So what we're going to do is reference the Django documentation. This one here, which will be linked in the description, shows how to use a paginator in a function-based view. So what we're going to do is bring in the paginator object from django.core.paginator. This is going to be at the top of our imports and the views.py file. And once we have that, we can set up this paginator object here. So copy this here, and this shows 25 contacts per page. We are only gonna set two so that we can see the effects of this pagination. So we'll copy that in there, and we're paginating the students, and it's gonna be two at a time. So that's the line here on line 13 that sets up the paginator object. Going back to the documentation, from the get request, we get the page within the URL. So let's copy this line here, the page number, and we're gonna get that from the get request. And if the page is not in the get request, we're gonna to default to page one. So we'll set a second parameter to the dictionary.get function. And again, back to the documentation here, we now get the page using this page number we've extracted from the get request. So I can copy this line of code here. And if we go back to the function, we can paste that in here. So paginator.getPage, and then we can add that to our context as a page object. And we'll set that equal to the page object on line 15 here. So if we save that, we can go back to our list and we will change the name of students to the page object that we have at a given time. So once you've saved that to page object, you can then reload the page. If we go back to this here, and we're now getting two at a time. And that's perfect for our setup. But this is still not gonna work when we click the button because we haven't added any HTMX attributes. So we need to go back to the list.html fragment here. And to this button, we're gonna add some HTMX attributes. So the first one's gonna be hxget. And we're gonna set this equal to the URL template tag. And we're gonna set the URL here within that template tag. Now, if we go to urls.py, we see that we've called the student list view or this URL, we've given it a name of index. So let's go back and paste that in here. And we're gonna set an HX target after this. And the target's gonna be this ID here of load more. So we'll paste that in here. It's the ID load more. And the reason for this 
is because when we load more data, remember this button is in a table row and that's the last row within this table. That's what we want to replace with the incoming students when we load up more data using this pattern. So we want to replace the table row with the idea of load more with the incoming data that is going to actually be defined in this template here. Let's now add an HX swap attribute to this button and the swap is going to specify that we're going to swap the outer HTML. So the whole table row, the final row within this table will be replaced by the contents of this particular HTML file when it's returned from the review. And when we return this HTML file, we will have another button added to the end with the same attributes. So it will replace the original button with the new data and then add another button at the end of the table. So what we're now going to do is we're gonna add Django HTMX to our project. So if we go to the documentation here, we can use the pip install Django-HTMX command. So run that here within your environment. And once that's installed, you can add Django HTMX to your installed apps within the settings.py file. So go to settings.py and add Django HTMX. And we also need to add a middleware as well to make this work. So copy from the documentation the middleware and paste that into your middleware setting. And once that's done, we have access within our views to a request.htmx object. And what we're going to do is if it's an HTMX request, we're not going to return the entire index.html. Instead, we're going to return the list.html fragment. So let's set that up just before the end of our view. If the request is an HTMX request, and this is a Boolean, it's true or false. If it's true, we're going to return the render call. And to that render call, we're going to pass another template. And that template is going to be this one here, core slash partials slash list.html. And that corresponds to this one here. And finally, we'll add the context to the render call and save this file. So let's run the server and we'll see what happens when we go to the page now. If we refresh, we get this table again and we click load more, we get two more, but you see it's the same two that we had the first time here. And that's because we're not attaching the correct page to a request. When we click the button, we want the page to be the next page, not the current page. So for example, right now, we have loaded the first page of the paginated data. When we hit the click more button, we want to attach a get parameter saying that the page that we're now retrieving should be page two. So to do that, we're gonna go back to VS Code and we're going to change the button, the way that the URL has been constructed in the HX get call. And to that, we're gonna add that URL parameter of page and it's gonna be equal to the page object that we've got in our context. And that has an attribute called next page number. So if we add that and save it, we should now be able to go back here and refresh. And when we hit load more, we get the next two lines of data. It's not repeating what we had in the first two lines, it's getting the next two. Now we had five students, we're only loading four here. And when we click the button, we don't get the final student. So if we go back to VS Code, what I'm gonna do is we're only gonna render this button if there is a next page in our data. So to do that, we can add an if statement down here. And we can say if the page object has next, that's an attribute on the page object, which is a Boolean that determines whether or not there's a next page. If it has a next page, we can render out that button. Otherwise, we will not do so. We'll just return nothing. So we can end the if statement here. So if we save that and we go back to the page and refresh, we can load more and we get the next two lines. Now we have one more student and when we click load more, we get that student and that is it. There is no more button because we have no more data in our database. So this is the click to load pattern in Django and HTMX. Let's walk through this process from start to finish. We start off in the index view by loading two lines of data. And this comes from the index.html, which includes that partial. And that partial contains a button that has an HX get attribute. This attribute sends a request to get the next page number from the server and the view contains this paginator object which paginates the data two objects at a time. So when a request comes in for the next page of data, the page number will be two and that will then get the next two records from the database. And because the button sends an HTMX request, this will evaluate to true and it will return the partial containing the list.html. This is the same partial that was included here on line 14 in the index.html. In the HTMX case, it's going to simply render this partial with the next two students displayed within this for loop as table rows. And finally, if the has next attribute of the page object is true, 
it will also render the button that allows you to fetch more data but otherwise there'll be no more data therefore the button won't be displayed and therefore you can't fetch more records so that's all for this video we've successfully demonstrated how to do the click to load pattern using Django and HTMX as you can see here in the next video we're going to look at the click to edit pattern where we can click one of these students and be taken to a detail page that allows us to do inline editing of the students details so thank you for watching if you've enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to the channel and check out the twitter account which is linked in the description and we'll see you in the next video